good morning my dear students in the last modules we were discussing about the newton's laws of motion the newton's laws which uh, specify all the information regarding the concept of what is called a force in this connection we had said that the newton's first law has given us the very definition of what a force is whereas the newton's second law has given us an idea as how to estimate this force both in magnitude and direction in the process only we had derived the equation for the force in terms of the result what it gives as acceleration so force is equal to mass into acceleration we had derived the equation also there one more aspect that is going to be unfolded here in this third law is an important uh, consequence when a force occurs a force never occurs individually singularly anywhere there should be a always a pair of forces taking place simultaneously you can never have a singular force occurring if you are finding any singular force anywhere you should inquire into how real it is the reason is the law says the force occur in the form of pair known as action and reaction action force and reaction force whenever a force is occurring because of some agent we call it as action force due to the agent there if i lift the object here the force with which i am lifting is what is called as the action force on this body by me the moment i have that action force on the body the body also will show a reaction on me that is also there simultaneously so this action calls for a simultaneous reaction the reaction force will be equal in magnitude to the action force but will be opposite in direction that's what newton's law says the law says the third law the action reaction pair occur simultaneously such that the action and reaction are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction whenever they take place so this sort of uh, an inevitable occurrence of two forces as action reaction pair is the third law that we have now so that is it if you call the action force as f a the reaction force will be if you call it as reaction f r it is opposite to that these two are equal in magnitude that means action force is equal to reaction force like that the directions are opposite to each other let us take the example for this and try to explain what it is suppose you are hitting a ball in the hit that you are giving on the ball you are also receiving a blow from the ball probably because this ball you are not able to really feel any pinch of it if you hit a stone you will understand it very clearly as strong as you hit the stone the stone also is hitting you back as strongly so the blow received by the stone from you if it is called as action force then the blow you are receiving from the stone is what is called reaction force both are equal in magnitude this the harder you hit it the harder that you will feel it also so this is this is what is called the newton's third law the action reaction pair another important aspect of this action reaction force is they are when you call they are vectors forces are vectors they are equal and opposite 
then if this equation were true, then the net effect must be equal to 0. That means, whenever a force occurs, action reaction become equal to the same in opposite direction and your net effect must be 0. That is what you would expect. That is not true. There is an error in your statement there like, like that. Because the action and reaction are not taking place on the same body. An agent who is supplying the action force is receiving reaction force. If the action is there on the body, reaction is there on the agent here. So, when you are accounting for the net force acting on a body, these two forces are on separate bodies. So, you cannot account for the net force to be equal to 0. If you take a, a, a wall is there, a ball is coming here and the wall also hits the ball back. The ball will receive the reaction force, the wall will receive the action force here. This is on this body, this force is on this body, whereas this force is on this body. So, naturally, you cannot account them as though they are balancing each other there, they are not balancing. Also, they are not any cause and effect consequence here. Cause and effect means, if one should be the cause for the other, one should be the cause, other must be the effect of that. Like for example, force and acceleration. Force is there, then acceleration is produced. When force is not there, acceleration is not produced. Force is the cause for acceleration. Acceleration is the effect of the force. If you see in the same way here, nothing is the cause nor the other is the effect. Because both are simultaneous, both are forces and they are inevitably happening there. If you consider this action force is cause for the reaction, you can equally argue and say the reaction is the cause for the action force. There is no action without reaction, there is no reaction without action there. So, therefore, there is not a consequence of cause and effect relationship here. That is also to be remembered. So, if you say, if you put this in uh, terms of we call this as the body A, this is body B, you can write in our notation, if the force of body A on B, then the force of body on the body B due to A is opposite to that. In magnitude, they are equal, direction is opposite. We can put in vector form or in scalar form, whatever it is. We are told putting about vector form, then you are putting that bar also on that, otherwise you are talking about magnitudes there. Minus indicates opposite direction anyway. So, that is what is to be remembered. So, this is what Newton's third law is. Where is the law applied? We are given an example, all right. Everywhere, anywhere, wherever the force is occurring, we have to give this example there. We have to apply this action reaction force there. Take for example, you, you take a table on which you keep a body on the top of that. Then, the weight is a force which is acting on the table, weight of the body is acting on the table. That becomes the action force. Then, the because of this contact due to that weight, a reaction is developed from the table on the black. And this uh, reaction is developed from the table on the block there. And that reaction is what is called normal reaction, we said. That is why we call it as normal reaction. It is occurring because of the weight normal to surface from where it is taking place. So, that is why this is action reaction, but they are in contact one example there. It is not necessary that always these two bodies to be in contact. Sometimes you can have the force at a distance also. Like for example, you keep a positive charge here, negative charge here suppose there. There is an attraction of the negative charge on the positive charge, pulling it in the direction. This is one force. And there is another force that is also attracting the negative charge towards the positive charge like that. So, that is also there. So, these two, if you call this F and F dash, once again, these are simultaneous and opposite. They are equal magnitude. So, if one is called as action force, the other is a reaction force here. Now, it is difficult to say whether positive is attracting the negative or the negative is attracting positive there. 
at least in the case of the ball and the wall you can say you are hitting the the ball is first coming and hitting the wall wall is sitting there quietly you can call the blow of the ball on the wall as action therefore reaction you can say this is action that is reaction you can say here it is difficult to say this is also attracting that there is also attracting this if one is the action and there is a reaction there you can take this as action that becomes a reaction automatically so that is what is happening and they will be simultaneous on both of them in fact to be more precise you must write them along the same line like what you have drawn there you must draw like that this force of attraction will be there because in the opposite direction you can write like that also so the nature of the action reaction pair need not be only when there is a contact between the bodies it can be from a distance also you take the example of uh, the earth and the moon here the earth is attracting the moon and the moon is also attracting the earth gravitational force we say there is a gravitational force of the earth on the moon gravitational force of the moon on the earth also is there both are there this is pulling it that way that is pulling it this way this also once again action reaction pair just like what you have seen in the case of the electrical force so this also <coughs> you consider the distance now this is a very far away distance actually even though they are far away distances their existence is very much established that is why the earth is uh, so moon is going around the earth there because of this force only it is going taking place there otherwise the revolution of the moon around the earth will not take place likewise you can think of the planetary motions around the sun and the satellites around the planets everywhere this force is very much there in the form of action reaction pair so that is what is to be remembered we can give another example suppose you take uh, a, a gun from which you fire a bullet when the bullet is fired forward with a, a velocity because of the piston pushing this bullet forward the piston that is the whole uh, gun there just when it leaves when the collision takes place the bullet goes forward the entire gun receives reaction force there the action force is driving the bullet forward reaction force is pulling the gun backward so the one who is a uh, firing holding it must be thoroughly supporting the force otherwise it may hurt him also on the other side so that is why we have to be uh, very uh, careful while accounting for the number of forces acting on a body including this action reaction pairs whatever they are right we take an example for you to el 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 elucidate this further in mechanical problems that we generally come across if you take a stone tied to a string suppose like this once again this is the weight of the stone there the string is pulled from this so there will be a force that is coming up in the string that is tension so this tension is equal to the weight in magnitude of both in direction this tension in turn is pulling this point down here now the force along the string is the tension here this tension is pulling the uh, roof down the point of suspension is pulling down and it is receiving that that means without this connection here you can't get tension force also in it so there is a body here experiencing two forces one due to the string upward one due to the weight downward and there is a body point here also experiencing forces one due to this another due to the pulling of this tension there will be a reaction there so you can see action reactions are simultaneously existing now you can see these things more in detail we will take another example let us see here how to account for the forces sometimes it must be more clear with a more concrete example we will take suppose there is a block here there is a block on a surface like this and there is a rope tied to it there is rope tied here and a man here is holding this standing on the floor like that and trying to pull it there say now there are three things here one is the block here is a man 
and here is the rope. There are three things. So, the forces are now acting on all three bodies. How to account for the forces with the help of this action reaction pairs we will see. Let us take the rope first here because the pulling takes from the, along the rope only. The man pulls the rope and the rope pulls the block there. That is how it is happening actually. Man is not directly pulling the block. So, the force of the rope on the block I will call it as Br, the force on the block due to the rope there. This is the action force. Then the rope has to receive it. So, that is the force of the block on the rope. So, the rope is pulled this way when block is pulled that way. This, are, this is what is called action reaction pair. This one set here. This is action, that is reaction. Now, coming here, man is pulling the rope and rope is pulling the man. So, in this case, again there are two forces, force of the man on the rope, force of the rope on the man. Once again, this is another action reaction pair here. I have show, taken here the forces in the right direction as positive, those which are in this direction I have taken negative to show the uh, opposite direction there. So, the block is pulled by the rope in this way, so I have taken positive here and rope is pulled by the block this way that I put minus here, opposite direction, to the left there. Similarly, here also the man, the force of the, on the man, man is being pulled this way by the rope, so I put a minus sign. Rope is pulled that way, so I put a plus sign there. For it. But you can see in these four forces, there is one the force of the block on the rope, the force of the rope on the man. See here, this is in that direction. This, these two are in the same direction you can see, see here, these two are in the same direction, F R V and F M R, they are in the same direction. Now, consider the extreme ones now, see here, in between, the force of the rope the force of the rope on the block the force of the rope on the man, see, these two things, they are not action reaction pairs, because this is also applied by the rope only, that is also applied by the rope only, they are not action reaction pairs, these two are action reaction pair, these two are action reaction pair, one here, one there cannot be the action reaction pair observe various forces like that here. So, you must understand even though they all appear to be in the same direction like that because one is only one thing is taking place essentially man is pulling the rope, all the rest is taking place because of that. Even though it is like that there are four forces which are coming up in the picture. These four forces have two pairs action reaction pair and out of the, out of the four any two forces which are in opposite direction cannot be action reaction, like what I said here. These two are in opposite direction, you can see F R B, F R M, but they are not action reaction pair because they are not applied on by different bodies. Action reaction pairs are given by different bodies. One applies action on something, that applies reaction on the other one. So, therefore, you must understand that clarification very clearly. Let us now analyze all the forces detailed here. Let us see how we can account for it. Now, let us see the forces on the rope. Let us take first. What are the forces acting on the rope? Man is pulling the rope and 
block also is pulling the rope both are there. So, force of the block on the rope, force of the man on the rope. Uh, I think put the other way. I call the first one the force on the rope from the block here from the man here. Let us take that. That means these two, like what I was telling just now. These two forces are opposite in direction. They may be equal magnitude also here, incidentally, but they act on the same rope. Therefore, if you say like this, if the system were to be in equilibrium, then this must be equal to 0. So, net force on the rope is 0, then the for rope will be in equilibrium. Otherwise, if it is not so, what will be the case? Net force will give you acceleration to it. Let us see what I will put that way. Mass of the rope into acceleration of the rope. So, this will be the net acceleration that if you take that. These two are in opposite directions, you put in magnitudes there only, then you have to write F R B minus F R M because they are in opposite direction. Magnitude minus direction is shown here, must be equal to M R into A R magnitude same value. So, now if the system were to be in equilibrium, that means the rope should be stable, not moving while this is happening. That means as the block is moving probably nor the man is moving all right, force are there still very much. In that condition, if this were to be equal to 0, what do you expect from this? For equilibrium, it must be that these two forces must be equal. That means, the block is pulling the rope and the man also is pulling the rope, both forces are equal, then there won't be any movement in any either side. It will be in equilibrium. Suppose, if R B is greater than F R M, block is applying more force on the rope than the man. Then what happens? You will have net force will be the acceleration of the rope. This will be to the towards the block. That means, the rope will move this way in this direction, left direction. Similarly, if the other way, if the force of the rope on the man, the rope, force of the man on the rope is more other way here, then the rope has to move that way. So, acceleration will be in the direction towards the man. That means, it will be in that direction. So, you can see, so whenever you talk about a particular object you are considering, you have to consider the force acting on that object only in your mechanics. But keeping in that view, before doing this job, you have to first uh, uh, assign all the force existing there. Actions, reactions, everything must be labeled, accordingly you must take it. One more thing also there. Suppose MR is equal to 0, then what happens? Whether this is greater, that is greater, whatever the case may be, what do you think? If MR is equal to 0 also, it is going to be 0. That means, if the rope is massless, the mass of the rope is does not come into picture at all, it is very negligible, say, then, then also FRB will be equal to FRM. In that case, only it will be equal there. Otherwise, either this will be greater, that will be greater. If this is equal to 0, this is equal to 0, only when M R is equal to 0. That means, rope is massless rope. So, generally most of the problems we consider with uh, a string that is attached with less mass, zero mass, practically negligible, negligible mass, we say like that. So, accordingly you should understand that. So, in the case of massless rope only, these two things are equal. Otherwise, you have to account either to the left or to the right according as the case may be. Now, this is the force on the rope. Then let us take the force on the man how it is. Now, let us see the force and the man what they are. Again, there are two forces. One is the force of 
the rope on the man MR and there are other forces also on the man here. Man is standing, his weight is acting vertically downwards. Normal reaction is there. And when he is trying to pull it, the friction also comes up in the picture here. When you try to pull this way, the friction will be in the opposite direction there. You must remember that. There will be friction in this direction, frictional force on the man. And now let us, these are the force existing there. One is rope, and there is a man, uh, friction there, weight here, normal reaction here. So, man is not moving vertically in this direction, therefore, N must be equal to W with the opposite sign, you can say. Normal reaction is due to weight only. Okay. Then, what about the other case? F, MR, force of the rope on the man, and force of the friction on the man. These two are there. So, the resultant one only will try to account for this. These are in opposite directions. Now that this is in the forward direction on the right side, I may call this as plus, I may call this as minus, all right. Because the, this force is this way, left side. This must give the effective uh, acceleration on the man. Suppose I call it as minus is the mass m, I will call say, or I will keep it capital M to understand better small m I right mass of the man is m. So, now you can see this will be the condition equation of motion you have to account applying Newton's law when question of the force on the man are considered. Here if man is in equilibrium suppose so is not moving then this must be 0. You know, cannot expect man having 0 mass he will have some mass anyway. So, acceleration must be 0. Acceleration 0 means the whole thing is 0. In that case, when this is 0, you will account for the two forces acting on the man equal in magnitude. That means, the force applied by the rope on the man, the frictional force both must be equal. There is any opposite direction, the balance each other then. Therefore, no effective force taking place. Provided, suppose you have, in any case, like in the earlier what I said, if M, F4 frictional force is greater than the force of the rope on the man, suppose. That means, man finds a slipping. So, you will find the net acceleration will be towards the right. Acceleration will be towards the right. That means, this way. On the other hand, suppose the force of the rope on the man, that is greater than frictional force, then net acceleration will be towards left. That means, it will be like this, in this direction. So, it all matters again. We cannot apply the condition like man having zero mass, that would not take place here at all, like what you see in the case of the rope there. So, this is how you have to account for the force acting on the man, taking action reaction into consideration what is acting on him there. Here, F, M and this, these two forces are not action reaction forces, remember that. The force of the rope on the man and the frictional force, they are in opposite directions acting on the same man, yet they are not action reaction pair, that is to be remembered. So, like that, you must know how to account for the action reaction pairs. Let us take the third example, the block here. What about the force acting on the block? The force acting on the block, if you see, there is one that is the from the rope, rope is pulling the block. Friction, therefore, the friction comes up in the opposite direction on the block, weight of the block, normal reaction on the block, once again. So, these are there, weight of the block, normal reaction on the block. Once again, this is the system you have to account for as for the motion of the uh, block is concerned. 
So what is the effective force on the block now? FBR minus FB. This forward direction is backward direction. So minus. That accounts for the net acceleration of the mass of the block if I call it as MB then acceleration of the block. Now you see these two are anyway balanced just like in the case of man these two are getting balanced here. So effective movement should be either to the left or to the right. When will it be to the right? When FBR is greater than FB then the acceleration will be to the right in that direction. On the other hand if FB is greater than the force from the rope on the block then the acceleration will be to the left like that. So you must account like this for the force acting on that. If you want if you see that the block is not moving at all then this will be 0 acceleration is 0 that means net force is 0 that means these two are equal and opposite forces acting on the block. It may happen sometimes a man is pulling hard is slipping himself down rope is being pulled he is pulling is himself putting pulling down rope is also because of that is moving still the block is mass heavy enough that is not moving say it can happen. So it all depends upon their individual masses again that is important only in the case of a negligible mass of the rope we have in between we can avoid the force on the rope now mass itself is not there. So these things can be avoided now that means they are negligible they are negligible in the sense they are not there at all only there is a mass then you think of force on that mass when the mass itself is not there what the force is there on that at all therefore in that case the force of the man on the block directly what force is applying here this is the force coming from the man directly on the block this is on the block directly from the man similarly here this force will be directly from the block on the man then they become action reaction pairs so this and that because this is not there now in between so like that action reaction pair in the connected body problems where more connections are given also you have to account for the connection body problem in that way that is what is implied in the Newton's third law of motion. There is an interesting question that uh, intelligent horse can say. When you put a horse connect to a cart there, horse has to pull the cart. The horse says, if I pull the cart, the cart also will pull me back equally. So I do not pull it. I have also studied some physics. Newton's told me that if you pull the cart, cart also will pull you therefore do not pull it a lazy horse appealing appearing as if it is intelligent there. How do I account for this how do you explain to the cart uh, to the horse there that you are I know more physics than you you should be able to say that that is this here you see the problem how it is if you put the figure, figure like what you have put in the case of the block and the man here now it is cart and the horse there is a cart here say roughly we call the horse here and the cart here connected by a connection in between of any type could be whatever it is considering the connection there. Now the horse has to pull the cart. If the cart were to be pulled there must be a force in this direction that is coming from the rope here connected in between the connection there. So the rope has to pull it and that is pulled by the cart also equally back. But how is the horse able to provide that force? You cannot simply produce some force in air parallel to the ground like that. It must be on the ground, then only it can apply it. Let the horse go up into air and apply the force, let me see. It won't happen. So what is the what is it getting the force from? Where is it getting the force from? From the ground. It puts itself firm on the ground and then force pulls. That means from the ground a force is generated by the horse. That force is because as a reaction force from the ground on the horse. This is the force that it is taking from the ground. It is pushing the ground for that purpose 
in this way force on the ground from the horse. This is the action reaction per actually that is occurring there. So, this force can now be analyzed into two components. One as this one the F H I will call it as X horizontal component F H vertical component Y component two components come there. So, these two components are now because of that in this this component normal component will account for the weight of the horse. So, weight of the horse is balanced by that one the vertical component. Whereas, this force it is pulling in this direction that is applied on the rope and therefore, that is getting a reaction the horse will get that much reaction here because of this force H x there. Then it is also pulling the this force applied on the cart there is the force on the cart now due to the horse. Now, here the force of the cart on the horse also is there. This is the action force, this is the reaction force now. These two are in opposite direction, this is nothing but the same thing I have put that way for you to understand the action reaction pair. That means, F H C is equal to F C H the minus sign or because if you take on the right side as the that taken plus positive here and this is nothing but F H x only that is there. That is not all to be taken. There is a friction that is taking place on this side. When the applies force on that way there is a frictional force acting here on the horse. So, what is the effective force now? The effective force on the horse resultant force on the horse we will say this f x forward this minus f h that is the force that the horse is getting to pull there this, this is the pulling force. I will say resultant pulling force I call it the horse applying like that right like this here resultant pulling force net pulling force. from the horse. So, this force minus the f x there. So, that resultant is going to be the force with which it is pulling it that means, this equation is now because when you take a effect also in consideration this equation is further modified now. This is what we call as the net pulling force on the cart from the horse we have to call it now like this. So, this is the force. In the earlier case, it was different, where friction was not considered. So, that is the pulling force. And as for the cart is concerned, as usual, the weight is there vertically downwards, normal reaction is there, they balance each other. Frictional force will be there in the direction, and the cart, just like in the block example, what I said, the pulling force is this, that means this. So, F C H net pulling force from the uh, horse minus the frictional force on the cart due to the floor that will give you the effective acceleration to the cart here. Cart mass is m, m c and that is yes. So, we can tell the horse intelligently that do not worry you are not pulling you are not doing anything to the cart there you are only pressing the ground hard overcoming the friction there and the remaining course is taken care of by the physics you do not have to do anything more do not worry about your reaction on you and all that be cool it will take care of you that is all right. So, the horse has to oblige if it does not listen we know how to whip it to drive it further. So, anyway so that is the horse got a problem generally explained in this way. So, for the 
lighter side of it, I told you that way, but the message is very serious inside it anyway. That is how to account for the force acting in there. With this background on the uh, action reaction, now you can apply the knowledge of action reaction wherever a force takes place. If the force is not accompanied by a reaction, remember that force is not a real force. It must be a fictitious force, appearing like a force, not a force. That is to be understood. Thank you.